What is going on, everybody? Welcome to week 181 of Behind the Bench. BTB Podcast is here with another edition of the pod for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you got Chim back here this week. We got Homer. We got Tommy Vajos and making um, an appearance back to the pod. My goodness. Is it ever nice to see Mesa Savage back on the screen here? Um, you can find Behind the Bench podcast everywhere on social media at BTV Podcast Double in underscore. That is for Twitter X and uh, our Instagram. You can also find us on TikTok, YouTube at Behind the Bench. And for all your other BTB needs, merch coming soon at www.behindthebench.com. Cool. Fellas, it's great to see you all once again. Let's send it over to Mason Savage. Mason Savage, Monet, how are we doing? Life's good. Just got off the ice, trying to get Lockerbie hockey uh, ready for the season. The boys are looking good, but I know I'm sorry for my prolonged absence since about April. Uh, Making a quick appearance (laughs) here to satisfy some of the fans, but getting a lot of DMs. Uh, asking for my return, specifically Zach Matheson. Uh, <laughs> yes. We're good. We're good. He's, he's yes. going to be so happy nice to see you is. guys. Yeah. He loves to, to hear your voice. Snap it live. And honestly, Mace, I, 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 I really appreciate you coming on because Chim has been grumpy the last, you know, four months. So um, me and oh, Homer yeah. will agree to that. Grumpy. And uh, grumpy statement. <laughs> All this guys do is have high expectations for this group. This guy is Sue miserable. Me. Sue me. Sue me for high, having <laughs> high expectations here. Also, folks, I do want to um, apologize. apologize for not being last week. Uh, yeah. If if I was on the pod last week, I would have never let Tom talk about Miles Smith for that long. So my apologies about that because I, <laughs> I hit the skip button, you know, 30 seconds into the Miles Smith talk um, until Tom but you know what the best part on the you... podcast. Until Tom called me fat on the podcast. <laughs> I did um, not call so, you fat. Well, he, called, he, called me, he called me fat on the podcast. So um, I called you chubby you know, cheeks. You have chubby <laughs> cheeks. You know you have chubby <laughs> cheeks. I didn't call you fat. No, I'm your best friend. It's a this. difference. It, it, no. <laughs> So if I uh, if was, I insulted uh, you, I'm sorry. No, that was let me finish the, talking. The let intro. me finish talking. That was quite the let intro. Let me finish talking from uh, let me finish from talking. Tommy Vlahos. Um, we only have 20 valuable minutes of Mason. I'm just gonna defend myself quickly. The Miles Smith talk. Well, was, you took up 20 minutes of Miles Smith last last week. So. Can I defend myself? Miles Smith talk was solely because Roberto wanted me to dive into the concert. Before we hit recording, he said, I want you to talk about it. Let's snap it really long. Chim's well, not here. Then, well, let's then, do the intros our way. Then, uh, if he was on, he would, uh, he would, he would, he would have said on that. Roberto Bagnato. Definitely dash yeah. on Roberto Bagnato. And I did not call you fat. I've never called you fat. Handruli means chubby cheeks in Greek. That's what it means. And my grandma well, said that to you the first time you met her. I like, know. That's true. I know. Who's and I told you to man? your face when she... <laughs> you guys are all just tripping me. I go to a nice concert at the Opera House. Anyways, I can log off at any time, eh? Like I'm the only guy the I like House, right now. So I, I, no, in real talk. In real no, talk, no, no, no. Talk, Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I talked about the concert for an hour last week. That was last week. This but week, you didn't really, you amazing. Didn't really talk about the venue. You didn't really talk about the venue. So I just it's like the grand. It's like the grand on the S word. I don't want to say the S word because I don't know if I'm allowed steroids. It's so much nicer. It's like the well, same layout. You, you, yeah. you I go. know. You <laughs> walk in. It's a beautiful like church looking place. <laughs> and it's it's a gorgeous. It fits about a thousand people. It's perfect. That's great. Right downtown um, Queen Street. It's awesome. Fantastic. Homer, how you doing, buddy? I'm really enjoying the start here. I'm going to go get some popcorn. Uh, and I'm going to watch you two duke it out for a bit. But no, Homer's, Homer's doing good. He's all upset. Yeah, yeah. We got a, we got a pot out last week. It's like the end of the world. Look at Mattis. Look at Mattis. I thought we did a fantastic oh job. Anyways, I Homer, thought you guys I did a great job. Intro. I thought you guys yeah. did a great job. Uh, this Roberto a great, did a good job. It was a great epi. Yeah. It was a great epi. Yeah. No, Homer's Roberto good. Great the Hornets are hot. The Bills are hot. And my fronts are hot. But we'll get into that later. Um, nothing's really new. <laughs> Working like a dog. And uh, yeah, everything's good on my end, boys. Awesome, Homer, I'm, I'm Tommy, glad to hear you're doing great, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Tommy, how you doing, man? 
Um, you know, I'm going to keep my intro short because apparently I wasted everyone's time last week. Uh, it, it's been uh, it's been good. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> okay, Tom. No complaints. Sounds good. No complaints. No complaints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well tom thanks for asking i had a great week last uh yeah last oh that's week, good um on my vacation so it was great to be on my vacation um, well deserved buddy yeah don't worry the pod still got out don't worry yeah don't worry. no you guys did great like uh like i said roberto did a great job um mm-hmm. on that pod but uh yeah uh I had a hell of a week boys uh won the turkey open on monday uh as uh, as Homer, I told you all about the Turkey Open. Uh, Raw Maths and I made three birdies, 13, 14, 15, to seal the deal um, at the Turkey Open and win it all. It was good. Um, then followed that up with a Bruce Springsteen concert. Um, and I'm going to keep it short um, because uh, obviously the Miles Smith talk. But I will say the Bruce Springsteen show is once in a lifetime like you have to do it it is unbelievable and uh like three hours straight 75 years old you cannot beat it uh so that was my second time i I know i said once in a lifetime that was my second time it gets better every time so you know i don't know how much time the boss has left touring i highly suggest going uh to check out a show is unbelievable so that's about it. Um, other than that, I guess let's do it. Let's announce it. Um, let's do it. I think we'll do it here, right here, right now. I let it slip two pods ago, um, and I believe it just got alluded to in the wonderful article written by uh, by Ben Leeson. Um, so we might as well uh, get it out now. The boys have a big trip coming up. We're headed to Minnesota. Minnesota. We're heading down. To Minnesota, um, a little celebration trip, as well as uh, we're going to see a couple wild games and Monday night, Monday night football, Vikings Bears. Um, it is going to be an all time, all time trip. So excited for it, boys! I don't know if you guys want to chime in. Let's hear it. How how are we feeling about uh, about Mini here coming up? I'm I'm ecstatic. The only sad part, and I've you know lost a lot of sleep on it. I'm not gonna have uh, Mason Savage on the airplane to hold my hand because my vertical is uh, the only unfortunate thing. Four of the five people will be there, and like you said, Jim, we're gonna have a great time and uh, two good hockey games. Minnesota is one of the best teams in the NHL right now, in my opinion. I'm not biased. They actually are. They're gonna actually probably add at the deadline, which is exciting for them. And obviously, Marcus. And I wanted to say um, I watched a bit of that Chicago Bears New England Patriots game yesterday. The Bears, I thought, would be interesting because uh, Caleb Williams, but they aren't looking the greatest, uh, to be honest. I know they're four and five now, but obviously the record in December will be different. But the Minnesota Vikings guys are legit. So I'm excited. It's going to be a great time, great content. And uh, obviously we have a lot a lot of stuff planned, so more to come. More to come. More to come. Uh, Homer, how are you feeling about it? I am pumped. I could not. I could not be more excited. Actually, <laughs> dates are circled. Uh, we got our flights booked. Everything else is going to work itself out. Uh, I am really looking forward to you know seeing you guys. I know it's been a while, and uh, yeah, this is this is my first uh, business my trip. First, yeah, this is my first business trip with the boys. So I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, um, get a lot of rest that week before um it's it's exhausting you know constant mic talk and putting them the microphone yeah, for on sure. and... a couple of uh business meetings um you're yeah. gonna see Jim i know you built for me element <laughs> i wasn't gonna, going there but you're gonna see me on my best you're gonna see me uh in my prime in my element so watch out homer watch out <laughs> can we got wrestle. the... we're wrestling <laughs> we are wrestling that's for sure you're gonna that's be wrestling sure. i'm gonna be boxing <laughs> within four feet <laughs> ping right on the button good night jimmy <laughs> uh i know homer you could chuck him i know you could chuck him so i know you got that farmer strength too so that is scary hours for sure that adds to um, it, yeah. yeah 
Um, in other news, and uh, before we get to our performers uh, of the week here, uh, Spad Hockey Tournament just got announced January 23rd to 25th. We are running it back, and I will tell you, Jimmy Holland, uh, Jimmy uh, Dubis, I've been on the phones. I've been working the phones. We have a squad coming to Spad Hockey Tournament. We have a squad. I'm waiting on one more player. Uh, you know, we are in deep contract negotiations uh, right now. Um, you know, money's on the table. Everything's on the table right now. We're going full London Knights mode uh, trying to sign this guy. So um, keep, uh, keep your eye on this guy. But uh, we will be in there for spat hockey tournament one more thing before we get on to our performers of the week as you're listening we are recording on a monday uh, and this is a special monday it is remembrance day so just want to um send our love and appreciation and thanks to the soldiers that have fought for Canada and across the world for uh, our freedom. We love them. Wear a poppy. Uh, hope you were a poppy uh, up until uh, November 11th here. And let's get the show on the road here. Performers of the week. Boys, what do we got? Tristan Ritchie at Lake City Realty Performers of the Week. Tommy, do you want to lead it off? Yeah, I actually have a few. I feel like Jim here, but I'm going to save them to one where everyone's done. I'm actually going to... Um, the big nickel hockey tournament that just happened this past weekend. I'm going you the U15 Wolves. The U15 AAA Wolves won the tournament in overtime, two one overtime thriller. Um, brings me back to when I won the tournament when I was on the U18 team. Jim, you were there for it. Uh, I think you were in the building when we won in shootout there, right? That was a semifinal. I think the shootout was. Yeah, I got I got the video of uh, I got a video of the final shot. Maybe I should just post that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah the, Maddie the Maddie Mayhem and Net. Good angles, net, so hit the it, post. Yeah, good angles, hit the post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good goaltending there. But yeah, U15 Severy Wolves uh, winning the uh, Big Nickel Tournament. Always the best to win a local tournament, especially that one that's been around forever. So That's the big one. That's the big one. And also, I do want to say, there. it looks like there was a really good turnout this year in terms of teams coming from down south. Um, Correct. Which is always great to see. I know Homer uh, and his squad was too big time to come and play uh, the big nigga, too scared of the North uh, back then. But uh, yeah, Mace, you had your hand up. U15, that's the draft year, kids? That's the year before. Year, year, before pro- draft, year, year. prior. Yeah. Yeah. So major. That team, Pee-wee. grade nine. Major, major minor ban. Major, minor Bantam? Major, Bantam, major, Bantam, major, Bantam, major, Bantam. major Bantam. That team is hashtag loaded. Just letting everybody know. Uh, so. I did. Uh, I was prepping them to be my performer of the week, but don't worry, I got another one. But as I was looking at, they are ranked 16th in Ontario right now, um, so that's mm-hmm. quite high for a Sudbury team. The U14 team, you want to yes. start marking. You want to start just put a nice little star on that team. They are they third are. in Ontario. Third in Ontario right now. Um, I don't know the la- the last time we've seen a team ranked that high. Honestly, I think it was Tom's uh, team back in the day. So, yeah, Homer. My year. Your, oh, yeah. The old threes were good that year. Yeah, they were good. Really were good. Top, top 10, were, I think. Top 10. Top 5. Were they top 5 last they that year? Top 5, I think. Yeah. Did you I pay attention to, to the too. hockey rankings? Were you my hockey rankings guy, Homer? No. I'm not going to lie to you. I, uh, I, I, I loved it because I, I, I would check in on who, who. I love seeing who, how far down the line we were. <laughs> I've come I'd to like, like to see who we're gonna play them now and see, but I never did when I was playing. Really, gotcha. Yeah, that's fair. gotcha. Yeah, my yeah. hockey rankings, unreal. They've been around for a long time now, long time. I was at the top of those. Yeah, for sure. You had double some good a, teams, mate. Our double yeah. A Coppercliff team. Wow, I was a backup though. I was backup. We were number one, <laughs> double A. <laughs> oh, we. I, I have pulled up Tom's team's record the valley east rebels when they made the super team it was again some stupid like 63 wins like one loss or something like that but jim um, jim that team was so good i'm not pumping my tires no one really wants to hear no, this. that team we was were, unbelievable we were we were a double a ranked based on population but we were in the triple a my hockey rankings yeah section like we were top 10 were in the triple a section being all the triple a <laughs> teams yeah they were legit. it was nuts. they were legit it was nuts. they were legit yeah you and b squad. um 
<laughs> yeah, some would say. Some would say. Um, who wants next? Performer of the week. Mace? Well, I'll say on brand since I haven't been here in a while. Um, going to my family, obviously, the Savage family. My grandpa John went down for the first time to see Red play at Michigan State. Nice. And Red scored this weekend against Ohio State. Big weekend for Michigan State. Uh, I'm thinking Natty for those guys. Why not? Red Savage. Yeah, they, well, they they were loaded last year. They they're um, just as good. Trey yeah, just as good. Net. Yeah, isn't but, he? He'll be the front runner for. Uh, he was the goalie last year at World Jays, right? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. could win Hobie Baker this year. Really, really, really. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Um, Homer, I'm staying right on track with the frozen water sports. And uh, Jim, I took a lot of heat from you. And I don't know if you saw the group chat this morning when I said good morning to all you guys. But the Kingston Frontenacs are the top of the East Division after two enormous wins over the Oshawa Generals and the Brampton Steelheads this weekend. Any comments? No, I didn't think so. It's pretty quiet over there. I saw I saw Mirabha salute to the crowd. Uh, yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. He yeah. is also Crazy. the guy that uh, walked off the ice in Ottawa after scoring the OT winner with one second left. After a heartbreaker that I think was from top of the circle to top of the circle long. And then just told him yeah. they were going home. Wild. Bus. Crazy <laughs> sellies. Bus. Crazy sellies. Uh, yeah, wild. Um, all right, I will uh, go. I got a couple. Um, first of all, St. Charles Cardinals have kicked off their can food drive, looking to raise 60,000 cans um, for the school and the community. Tommy was featured in um, their promo video, uh, did the chant, uh, which was electric. So, Tom, it's out there. Uh on SEC, you send YouTube. this to me? Go check it out. I will send it to you. It is quite electric. And I will like to give a shout out. I thought Mace was going this way for his relatives. That's why it just brought up in my head. The JFZ band, folks. JFZ, Jack F. and Zulich band. Watch out. Um, they were legit. We went uh, to the Halloween uh, soiree at the Idlewild. They were playing there. For their first show, and they were awesome. They were phenomenal. So that was uh, wicked, a wicked uh, show. And keep an eye out for them because I think they'll be uh, producing a lot more and could be even featured on this show. So watch out for that, folks. With that, let's go to wait, our... Wait, community. wait, 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 wait. Can I give you a couple more I got? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go for it, Tom. Absolutely. I feel like everyone's got a couple more. I'm giving uh, some uh, some cookies to Kristen Danica, the Red Bull official, former guest, releasing a yes. uh, website, correct? Book? No. Nope. Cookie uh, book. book. Cookbook. Cookbook. Website's been out. Cooking book. Uh, she's been popping off on socials. Every time I see her, dude, it's like likes out of the wazoo coming out, right? She's she's very, very popular in socials and a lot, a lot of people... Um, Obviously, do follow her and congrats to her. And obviously, a, a former guest, so I wanted to give her uh, some high praise there. You know, yeah, that, that's well the only said. one on my list that I had. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, well said. Amazing. Okay, let's go to our Courtney's Bulletin Board. God, I love Courtney's. Anything you need, office supplies and more. Um, maybe, you know, you never know when you're in the market for a new, uh, new chair around here. So uh, I will always be going to check out Queenie's Office Plus uh, for that, folks. They have us all souped up here. Let's get it on to high school football. Just want to wrap it up. The season's over. It was a clean sweep uh, for Llewellyn on the boys' side, winning junior and senior. A four-peat on the senior side for Alex Venderman and the Llewellyn Knights. So just wanted to give a couple clicks to them. You can't deny greatness. Can't deny greatness. Mace, I believe you uh, saw them firsthand. So uh, maybe just a quick insight on, on how good the Llewellyn Knights were this year. Very well coached team. Vendy's got a great program. But they've been able to keep a lot of their players, and they grew a lot of players from grade 9. Quinn Mazuchin was playing in grade 9. Sola, obviously we talked to him. There's been this group that's just 
gone up with them. They've stayed for grade 12. Some came back for a super senior year. Uh, it's very impressive. And I'm, I'm hearing that a few of those guys are actually going to get some opportunity to play post-secondary as well. Uh, a couple position changes too, I'm hearing, but it's going to, it's going to be awesome for them. And it just doing really well for uh, Sudbury football. And I think it's going to keep growing and hopefully Vendy can keep this dynasty alive. Um, Hopefully in the next five years, Lockerbie has some competition for him. Our junior football program launched this year. Wasn't the best season for us, uh, just as a new program, but had some great games and going to keep growing from there. But you're seeing a lot more schools get a, a junior program, hopefully to grow into that senior program as well. But yeah, I can't say enough about Alex Venderman, the way he can coach that team and having one coach out there. He's got a few helpers, but he's he's the main guy and he's a leader of men and got 40 50 guys out there he's trying to manage for a practice it's crazy i've never me helping out with high school football this year never understood the the scope of it or the scale of it and it, it, it right. is hard it is tough yeah yeah big clicks to uh to vendy for sure we'll see if they can uh, make it five next year i believe they'll be losing steven sola next year so their qb but again looks like they have a good uh succession plan uh, ahead here so uh let's keep it rolling let's keep the theme going on to high school high school hockey has started here folks um a lot of people have been asking you know, boys what are you gonna give a little love to to high school hockey don't worry we got you um we got a few games played here so if you want to go through uh the standings here no surprises at the top here st charles at five and oh Llewellyn whoa, whoa, at whoa. Three Make and you're still on exhibition games there are those exhibition? You got to toggle. Oh, all game yeah, types. you got to toggle. Hold on. Thanks, Mace. Thank you. Regular season. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Okay. We got uh, St. Charles and St. Benedict with the two two teams with the most games played, I believe, at three. Uh, St. Charles, three and oh, St. Men's, two and one. Llewellyn, who we know will be battling at the top here, they're one and oh to start um, the year. So keep your eyes in the sky for that. Confed. Horizon, Lockerbie. This is kind of a leaded, uh, packed leaderboard here, Mace. Um, well, we haven't played a game be yet. tight, eh? Yeah, yeah, it'll be very tight. I think there's that that top tier teams, St. Charles, Llewellyn, Horizon, but a lot of these mid tier teams from last year are, are going to be pushing for sure. So the the A division is going to be quite good, but even the B division uh, for the playoffs, it's it's going to be stacked. So yeah. we'll have a good run. It's it's nice to see. Uh, High school hockey alive uh, and well here. Um, I played one year of it, and it was an absolute blast. Um, Tom, you got anything on this? I, I mean, you talked about success, succession plan just moments ago. You got to like to see St. Charles be at the front and always be at the front. I mean, off a year, we already know they're hosting. I think they're going to be a pretty hard team to beat. Not because I went there. I just know the coaching staff is very dialed in, uh, obviously, given the – given what they're going through this year. And uh, I just, from what I saw out of their run last year, I, I just like that squad a lot. For sure. Also, a lot a lot of guys that we coached um, back in the day, Tom, in the mix yeah. here on all all, uh, all those squads here. So that's nice to see as well. Um, so that is, the season just started. So we will be uh, giving the updates along the way here. But, Gotta and think we're going to be at be city finals and all that yeah, stuff. hundred percent. I think Llewellyn SEC, it's going to be right at the top. Hey, I'd love to see St. Ben's uh, get in the mix. It looks like they've uh, made some additions um, to their squad as well. So, and of course, Mace, of course I'll be rooting for the Lockerbie uh, Vikings. We're young uh, this and year. Coach we're Mace. Young. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that um, at all. So we, we did play a tournament. I believe St. Ben's won that tournament in Bishop. Yeah, uh, I, I did saw see St. That. Ben's play, saw LaSalle, Bishop, Champlain, and Lively. Uh, most of those teams were in the B division with us last year, and it was a great tournament. We went 3-0 and in the round robin, beat St. Ben's, Chimp, beat LaSalle, beat Champlain, but lost to St. Ben's in the semifinals. Well-coached team, very well-coached team. There you go. Okay, okay. Um, C&D back with the squad this year. Not sure if wow. they had one last year. Um, yeah, they had they, a good team last year. They, okay. I, from my understanding, they've had some players graduate. Okay. So I, I think they'll be a pretty young team too. I think okay. those, those top three will repeat in the top three again this year. 
yeah. but it's anyone's game to make it into that kind of that top division. So basically we play 10 games up until the winter break. And then after the winter break, the, the top teams move up into an A division, the bottom six and or five, depending how the rankings are. So you guys run the table, correct? You guys run the ta- Everyone plays each other once? Everyone twice? will play each other once. So we have 10 okay. games to establish our standings. And then after yeah. that, we get uh, divided into two divisions. And, and then, then from there, for- you play each team two more times. So about 20 games. And then from there is a playoffs. So A division. Series? Series, yeah. Best Dude, of five for A and best of three. That is nasty. It's great. Homer. It's not I, even I like cannot, that in competitive I, hockey. I anymore. cannot believe that you guys have 10 high schools in Sudbury. 11. Yeah. Ele- well, and 11. Homer, that's, that's, just, that's just teams play, like that have a team. There's a bunch of How many more high that, schools are there? A million. Well, there's four. There's Around four 14, boards. 15. Oh, I, yeah. There's a lot. The rainbow board's huge because it goes out to Eskimo. here in Alston. We got half a high school. <laughs> half a high school. I still barely. Yeah, but you graduated. guys would go and play like Simcoe area, right? Like the the whole district. Yeah, no? we we get down into the city too because we actually yeah. had a pretty good team. There you but, go. There you go. Yeah, high school fun. hockey, man. You gotta love it. So we'll so be back. obviously. Yeah, we'll be all over it uh, here, folks, giving you weekly updates on the pod um, as we move on here. Let's go to the OHL. A lot of news coming out of the OHL. Um, We got to talk about it, boys. First and foremost, um, NCAA comes out and says they are allowing OHL players to play in the NCAA now. So people who have stepped foot on the ice, players that have stepped foot on the ice in the OHL, or sorry, in the CHL, which includes uh, the Western Hockey League and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Anyone before this ruling came out, anyone that stepped foot on the ice was not allowed. They were considered to be a pro player um, and weren't allowed to play NCAA, which I rerouted a lot of players' careers. We'll get into depth about it. But... Uh, they've allowed now are allowing players. It's going to change the landscape of hockey around uh, the states and Canada. Obviously, we'll send it off to our old guy, uh, yeah. Homer. Just your thoughts. If you if you were still in the league, I guess what would you be thinking? You'd probably be thinking about going to school, no? Yeah, like I, I really think it's an exciting time for some of these guys because. So I'm going to talk about two things. One is play, like player development and how the trajectory has changed like over time. You see guys like McDavid, Crosby, all these guys that jump in and they are ready at the age of 18. But then you have guys that are a little bit late bloomers, right? They go to the AHL for a couple of years. But what an opportunity for these guys that need a couple more years to go to school, enjoy – you know, the atmosphere and everyone sees the videos on X and Instagram of these uh, college games, the places are jammed and it's an exciting time to be at school and play hockey there. Um, The other thing I want to talk about is the level and, you know, the skill that's going to be added to the OHL because some of these guys that are so set on going to school, go back and play in the OJ or, uh, the Noge or, you know, so many junior A leagues across Canada. And I feel like now it's just going to – it the major junior leagues, the Q, the Dub, and the O are going to be the best junior leagues without a doubt because these kids aren't – they aren't going to be worried about, you know, oh, I'm going to lose my eligibility. They want to play against the best, get ready to go, and then when their time's ready and, you know, they're, they're able to sign the card and get onto an NCAA team, they're going to be ready to do that. Um, I know a couple guys, I've talked to a few guys that I've played with in the past and, uh, you know, guys got phone calls literally the night that role was changed, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see how it changes things. And, uh, it, it's an exciting time for some OHL teams that are going to be able to get some players back that they never, never thought they were going to be able to because of this rule. I agree. Yeah. I it, agree. It, it looks well like it's going to be a big fe- feeder system. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, go ahead. Your thoughts? Here's my thoughts. The part that I like the most about it 
and Homer, you can correct me if I'm totally drinking the Kool-Aid on this. <laughs> it makes players, not players, individuals play the game of hockey that they love even longer. Now, I'm thinking it as they play OHL, they play in the dub, whatever, play in the queue, and they go f- and they get their scholarship in D1. Obviously, their their intent is to get the pro somehow, some way. But even if you extend another three, four years in school, you're still playing the sport you love, and then you get your degree. So, okay, mm-hmm. you, you lived your OHL dream, and then you go play D1. You get your school and your degree. And then if it doesn't work out, you don't play pro, you don't make it, you're ready to be start your life at 26, 27, 28. Like, you know what I mean? Rather than trying to work it out, grind it out when you're like mid thirties at this point and it's tough. Like 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near like that OHL level, but I kind of gave it up after my AAA last year of eligibility because I was like, why play junior when I know I can't get it to the next level. Right. But now these guys will go back, like you said, Homer, to, to grind it out in the OHL, be the best and then go to school after and hopefully make it pro. But I'm saying if it doesn't, they'll, 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 they'll go to school. Like, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity. I think it's, it's, it's the best of both worlds. It's, it's, be, it's best for both parties, to be honest. Absolutely. Especially for guys that are like sitting in overage spots and 19 year olds that don't really know what they're doing That's, next yeah. year. Correct. You know, some 19 year olds are going to be like, ah, uh, you know, the team's kind of stacked. I don't know if I'm going to make it as an overager. Screw it. I'm going to go to NCAA. I'm going to play four or five plus years. And I'm going to get the education that I want. And I get to go to a dream school that I've, uh, I've always, some guys always dreamed about the old, but everyone, everyone who says they didn't want to go to school, they were thinking about it. I was thinking about it and I can barely write my own name. So I think it's, um, I think it's really cool. I mean, I, I think it's the, it's the proper way to do it because even when I was at training camps and stuff in the past, guys would, you know, you'd always hear about like the odd first or second rounder that doesn't show up at camp because they're don't want to wreck their eligibility and that they're committed to a school. Well, now they have the opportunity to do both. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. A couple questions that I have uh, just thinking about, about this and Homer and Tom, you guys can chime in here is now is the league only going to get younger if guys are able to leave at like 18, 20, if they're committing at that age, or do you think they're going to stick it out? Like how, how does that work? It's hard to say because your draft year is your 18 year old year. So the best players, child teams could dictate where you're going to play. The best players are going to be told where to go. They're not, they're not going to have the choice. It's going to become, so say we'll do it this way. So, Buddy of mine, I used to play with Brett Harrison. Okay, we were in Windsor yep. together. He was drafted by the Bruins in the third round. Draft year rolls around, gets drafted, has a good first training camp. They're like, you know what? Instead of him having to go back to Windsor like he did, now they're going to be like, why don't you come play for BU or BC? We'll help you out. We'll get you in there. You're going to be around the city. Just you further your development, everyone. yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's yeah. so much yeah. closer. I feel like these schools that are in NHL centers are going to be the ones that really succeed because they're going to have like all these NHL draft picks coming to play for them out of junior. Um, I don't know if it makes it younger, but uh, it'll definitely make it stronger. Major junior will be back to being major junior. And we see, yeah. And we see the dub to Homer. They're the only league out of the two that draft, uh, 15. Four, was it 15, 15 year olds, right? 15. 15 year olds. Maybe that's a trend we see in the O and the Q to, to could, keep players yeah, playing a little bit more. Yeah, because it'll, it'll, it'll keep the league fresh, right? Like it'll make guys, yes, you'll have to move away from home one year earlier, but you might not be in the league that, that full five years. For sure. Right? You'll be granted. That's what it. I mean. Yeah, that yeah. that's that's exactly. No, I, guys leaving I at totally 18. Agree. I think yeah, it's still 18, so cool, 19. man. Of yeah, course it's it wicked. Whenever it's, I'm out of the it's league, it's really cool. Now, the only... yeah, of course. <laughs> so I, there's a couple guys I feel for. You're you're one of them, Homer. I mean, like I told you, I'll get on the phone right now. We can see what we can do. Um, but there, <laughs> now looking beyond the CHL and looking beyond the NCAA, we're yeah, talking the landscape of junior hockey is changed forever now. The USHL, um, Junior A, Junior B, Junior C, um, 
like the Brooks Bandits, for, first and foremost, the Brooks Bandits, the number one junior A uh, program in the country, all of a sudden probably going to evaporate? Like what is going to happen to them? I because wouldn't say evaporate, that, but I think all... every league is going to get weaker as you get lower, right? Because it's exactly well, and even with my decision, right? I I chose to stay home and play junior C, and you know the rules changed about about drop down players that um, that I well guys like me are called anyone who's played over two years junior C or higher is counted as a drop down. Every league's going to change, right? This yeah. is probably the last year that you see some of these leagues have teams that could play in the one above league. So for example, like there are some teams in the junior B loops that my junior C team, we could go compete with on any given night, some junior B teams to junior A and some junior A teams to some old teams. Correct. I think it'll just make the leagues a little more black and white. Like it'll be the OHL is the OHL junior, A, junior A, junior B is junior B and junior C is junior C. You're not going to see, but yeah, the only thing is like you, you feel bad for for the coaches there that have, have built these programs. Oh, like I, yeah. I'm just thinking about Brooks, like, you know, you know, dynasty of national championships. Um obviously even in the Noge, what's gonna happen to the Noge? Um now mind you not, not many guys not many guys not many guys from the Noge are going D one anyways. But I'm saying that incentive but Jim, for Jim, junior eight Jim. teams. I'm just I'm just pointing out. I know, I know, happen. and I'm That's agreeing. All. I'm agreeing to you. I think don't get me wrong. I think it's great that they made this decision. But, I thought it was but, a dumb rule the but, whole time. And I, maybe I'm really rude to say this, but it's like all these people that play, I'm just talking about the no, which is the northern pod here, play in on these teams, Jim, to try to make it to the next level. Now I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think they're just gonna be playing hockey to play hockey. Like I, I Yeah, like I it's gonna I be think- very hard. Very hard for them to make it now, right? Hundred percent. I'm, and you know, you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, you know, I came home and play here because I grew up watching uh, the Hornets. My dad was a Hornet. I wanted to start work, and it's your hometown team. I think we are going to see teams have a lot more local guys in Tier Two Junior because. Yeah they aren't going to have as much guys to grab. Like the OHL, the dub, the Q are going to take the top players every year. They are. Yeah. That's just how it's going to work. And then you're going to see like teams like what's an example here. We'll go like St. Catherine's Falcons. Okay. For junior B, you're going to see a lot more St. Catherine's kids playing there because they don't have imports. They're going to be coming in and taking their spots. They're going to have an opportunity to play at home and enjoy it. And have fun playing hockey. So yeah, for sure, I don't know. I there's pros and cons to it, um, but I think you know I, it's the right. I, move. I, yeah, at the end of the day, it is. But I, 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 I agree. Seeing seeing that, I, I, I was speechless. I won't lie. I was like, I thought that that would never have happened. It caught like, me off never, me. for sure. I I think there was a couple lawsuits from what I read in Sportsnet that was going on. Um, now the whole big thing was that, and Homer, you could confirm or deny, but I believe you guys got honorariums when you played in the O, you got some cash, some living cash, um, which made you consider to be a pro hockey player. That's what the NCAA deemed. And I think people were going back now, going back and saying, well, you guys are signing everyone to NIL deals now. So how does that make any sense? So, um, it makes complete. <laughs> yeah, there's a it, whole, there's right? a whole business. So it's all, it's all it. change. It's all money. It's all money. It, it's, um, it's here's crazy the thing you bring guys. that up. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. It's crazy you bring that up because Every- OHL players were yeah. given per diem. You had to hand in gas receipts yeah. and receipts for clothes and receipts for living to get that money every month. And these right. guys that sign N- N- I- NIL, is it NIL? NIL. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, guys that sign those deals, they're not handing in mom and dad's gas receipts. They're saying, no. thank you very much. Here's my auto deposit. I'll take it right now. And yeah, I think literally. that makes them more pro than junior. That's why it had to change. That's why it had to change. Exactly. It was getting and that NIL deal was obviously very recent. What I last hear- couple years. Since we're on the topic, I just want to add this in. I'm a little bit worried on, um, not because I am involved in a lot of coaching, which I am. I'm more worried about the attitude of some of these players. 
as in we are a Sabri Wolves podcast based, you know, we follow the team lots, Jim. I'm just worried about these guys that are basically already out the door as in have D1 rides that are like, I don't, why am I here type of thing? That's what I'm scared about. Like, why do I care about this season? We're last in the league. I'm out the door next March. Like, you, you, you know what I mean by that? Like, some of these people's mindsets might ruin it for a lot of players. Like, I, like so, I'm too good for you type of think, thing. Like, I I think like home. Well, first of all, you gotta you gotta keep in mind they have to play at least two years, um, in the old because fair, they're not old enough to go fair. to college. So they Yet, can commit yeah. to go to college, but. Um, you got to keep in mind they're still in high school when they when they join the O. So you got to play at least two, maybe three years, and then you know depending on if they get drafted or not, I think we'll see um, the scope of things. I think what we're gonna see is guys start to commit around eighteen years old and then start going in their OA year or after their OA year. That I think Talk that's about more. how we're gonna see it. The one thing I wanted to mention: everybody knows. The London Knights love their tactic of telling guys that they're going to commit to whatever school. And it was a common thing around the league, too. But they're going to tell guys to uh, commit to the school so their draft stock drops, and then they take them, and then they go to the London Knights. That's out the window now. Got to be out the window. Homer, confirmed the night? 100%. It makes makes the draft more even play field, right? Like. Yeah, this hurts probably, the stock of the London Knights out, out of. Okay, but uh, now here, videos. here's we can talk about this for an hour. <laughs> Is certain OHL teams and WHL teams, Q teams, are they gonna have their their schools that they want their guys to go to? Like, do you know what? Like, I, I'm thinking like uh, with the Wolves sure. link up connection. with Clarkson. Like you, you, you know what I mean? Like, there'll be relationships built between coaches, managers with with the uh, it's one it's I think. talk about more stress for how young these kids are you're talking about getting drafted and you're talking about d1 rides you're talking about what I program you're gonna choose I, and then you're talking I, pro like I, these people these high-end players better have really good agents man it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot moving away honestly, like I the stress on these athletes Jim, at this age like you gotta worry about like the mental capacity of some of these players i, I would handle this now like, i i want to i want to argue with you on that because you have more opportunity now. You have more opportunity. You do not have to worry about committing to play in the old or the think, NCAA at 16 yeah, years yeah. old. You can play. I also think doing it doing it this way, though, almost makes it kind of harder. I feel like you have an even playing field with everyone in, in North America now. Like, I think it's going to be harder. Like, the old, let's be honest, right now, the old, the CHL as a whole, is a little bit watered down. Um because I agree. a I'll lot agree of guys will go to NCAA because they don't want to make that decision at 16 years old to, to play. So they want they go to junior A and then they go to NCAA. The league's only going to get stronger. But again, I think knowing that there's that opportunity now to go to D1, at 16 years old, you don't have to worry about making a commitment. Um, I, I think Fair. there's less there's there's less stress. I feel bad for all the guys like, you know, like Homer, Cole McKay, a guy like Dario Belgio, who's playing D1 right now, but had to leave his dream of playing for the London Knights, where his uncle played, he was on the team, going to play, had to say no, go to Brooks. Obviously had a great uh, career in Brooks, winning two national championships. Um, thank you very much. So Thank you very much. So, but but he gave up that to go to D1. Um, you know what I mean? Took the much different route, the le- less popular route. Obviously, it, it paid off. But, I mean, now you don't have to make that decision. He he could have grinded out like he yeah. did. What's, um, what's, the outcome of, uh, o- what's the outcome of, you mentioned Cole McKay, what's the outcome of OUA hockey going to look like now? Why well, U Sports is Huge gonna, step it's, back. It's not going to be good. Huge step back. It's not going to be good. You're going to see a big regression in U Sports. That was kind of what I was, that was the one thing you're kind of worried about. But at the same time, like, I don't know. It's it's tough. U Sports is always a tough sell, I think, in my opinion. There was only the major schools. It was. Like, it was. Uh, it was. I again, a guy yeah. like Billy Moscow. A guy like Billy Moscow who's played, what, three years at uh, UFT, four years at UFT now? Like He's done now. He easily his, his last year is this year. Easily. easily. Could he Second easily round play the D1? Yeah. yeah. Could yeah. he easily play D1? So... You feel bad, but for the generations to come, this is the right move, uh, I believe. So, um, you know, good thing that they got it right. Let's see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see, to see what uh, happens. The style of, of this. 
I want to say one more thing. The style of hockey from uh, Homer can confirm this. I never played in the league. This is my eye, eye test. The style of play from OHL to Division One hockey, totally different. Oh, like, yeah. So these players switching to run and gun to more As of a team aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Like the OHL is like, Har- the CHL is like Harlem Globetrotters. And Globetrotters, like- yeah. And D1 D1's the like complete opposite. High and hard. Systems, high and hard. Defense. Yeah, very simple hockey. Uh, no no chances taken. Yeah. It's a man's game. For sure. Yes. For sure. So, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting, man. All right, let's go to uh, the OHL standings now. Homer, as you alluded to it, in the East Division, your Kingston Frontenacs are at the top of that right now with two big wins. Um, this weekend, Oshawa follows them right behind Ottawa, Brantford, and Peterborough. Peterborough got their first win, uh, I believe, against Niagara. They are one and thirteen now, folks. We should do the over uh, under seventeen and a half for the Peterborough Pete's boys. That could get dicey. Uh, Central Division, Niagara still atop of that. Barry to follow uh, with two games at hand. The Wolfers at nine and seven third place in the division north bay and branford uh at the bottom of it. i cannot believe branford almost 20 games in now just playing 500 ball um very interesting very interesting what's going on there i don't know if any moves any more moves will be made there but you got to think again you don't want to peak now so um we'll see what happens there we'll see what happens there midwest kitchener lundo erie Owen Sound and Guelph, and in the West Division, Windsor still on top of that with Saginaw trailing behind the Sioux, Sarnia, and the Flint Firebirds at the basement of that division. But it's all relatively pretty tight um, still, folks. But, guys, your overall thoughts on the O. We're about almost 20 games in now. Thoughts? We're starting to see it. We're starting to see it. Just wait till. When Santa Claus is coming to town, so is the trade man. I saw it too many times. Oh, what do you want for Christmas, Homer? Well, I don't want to get traded, but I did. Right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's coming, boys. And there are going to be a lot of teams that think they have a chance this year because of how tight it is. It's going to be aggressive, I think. All right, yeah, I'd love to see that. That's it. Could be gr- aggressive. Or guys can be like, Who, who's going to be aggressive? Who do you think is going to be aggressive, Omer? Like, is, could Bramford get another? Sorry, uh, Brampton didn't get another piece here. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if Brampton gets, they just got to get in. They just got to get in. Yeah, if Brampton gets another piece. I mean, you may as well just pack the team up and move them and play as the Allison Hornets next year. But I, it's hard to say. Like, I, I think. Uh, I think we're going to see Windsor make some moves because of yeah. how well they're doing. Uh, I could see Kitchener as well because they're at the top of that uh, Midwest division. Uh, Kingston, and Oshawa, even Ottawa. Like, it's it's tight, man. It's so tight. There's going to be, a, like, For Niagara. Sure. Niagara could be in. Yeah. Um, Barry could even grab another guy. Like, it's, it's, it's interesting. And I... I haven't. I've only been to one OHL game yet this year, but I'm going to start going to the Thursday nights in Barry and watching again because that's I, a squad. I, They're I, good. That Eli- good. That Eliasson on the back end, that big. He's a him big and Hson. My goodness. Yeah. Him and Hson. Yeah. Hson's a wolf killer. Hson's yeah. a wolf killer. That yeah. That sends that 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 sends pick. Eh. That was that the D man you're talking about. He's a yeah. Eliasson, monster. Yeah. Monster. He's a big boy. Big. Uh, big boy. Swedish. Big sweet Swedish kid. Boy. Yeah. 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 Now I'll, I'm just I'll, thinking. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I just the one team, and I'm I, I am a fan. I'm wearing their hat. I just can't see the London Knights not being all in because of Easton Cowan. Like that guy is legit. Oh yeah, a top end guy, and you can't waste good years with him being there. Like he is his last year, probably this year. He's making the Leafs next year for sure. So they'll, it's like they'll, that'll happen. That, and they, that, they have like a million draft picks in the first round on their team. Homer, confirm or deny that. Like, oh, what's his yeah. name? Dickinson, Bonk, all those guys. Like, oh, yeah. And you even have like Barkley. Barkey. Uh, oh, yeah. Barkey. I call him Barkley, but yeah. Barkey. Yeah. They have everybody. Like, so 
They got um, Blake Montgomery. Bryce, I, I don't know if you guys remember Bryce Montgomery played there. He's my age. Uh, his younger brother, he was drafted to Ottawa in the third round last year. They just got him. He made his OHL debut. Like they're because what, what was his story? He committed or something and came back. Like or yeah, 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 he committed and came back. Well, now it works out. You know what I mean? Shocker. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. how it works. It's how it works. <laughs> it's how works. Anyways, yeah, we'll, I just we'll think Lennon, the... Lennon always in the mix, but always in the mixer. There's yeah. a, a dynasty, right? So yeah, it'll be cool. So Homer, now your guy. I, I just think it now, just to just to pull, pick your brain here, um, because in the NCAA, obviously there are no such thing uh, as trades. What would you think? The the CHL or OHL would look like if there was no trades to be to be had in this. It'd be league. a disaster. You, you think so? It'd be a teams disaster. Wouldn't, teams wouldn't be able to to last probably. Eh? No, I mean it. It would. It make, all depends on how you draft, right? That that, that it would it, be all on the draft. It comes down to the draft and not so much building, yeah. right? Not so much building to uh, building to win, but more growing to win. Like yeah yeah right no it, Dude, it, it'd be all based sense? on the program right it'd be it, all a hundred percent on the program it, it's yeah. all and I feel like coaches might be more, a little more invested in guys in their development yeah. I'm not saying that what? they're not right now they do an excellent job yeah. but they're like okay we have this kid for four years maybe five yeah let's figure it out early you would also see a big problem with uh oa spots if there was no trades right because you would you would, oh, get, yeah. to a, you would right. get to a point where okay well some years we have seven or eight oas and we got to cut down there's no trades so we can't get anyone else younger right so yeah it would have yeah to. i got you they'd have to leave yeah i know you have to it yeah. also gives uh you know even though everyone is young it does give you a taste of what pro pro is like in terms of getting dealt and style how you de- yeah. you dealt with it right so yeah. yeah yeah it was just a little conversation piece i, I thought uh that popped up into my mind there for a second. Oh, that's, um, it's a good point. And I always thought about that too, especially when I was getting shipped all over Ontario. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, su- it's such a part of the league. Like yeah. it is like, it's yeah, it, no, it's all these teams loading up for the playoffs. Like you get yeah. excited. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty cool to be a part of something like that. I will say, I know, when I did get traded to Windsor to for the big playoff push there, it didn't work out how we wanted it. But just being a part of a team like that with so many guys that are playing in the NHL or going to play in the NHL was pretty, was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, looking at uh, some leaders here, guys. Michael Misa is at the league lead in points at thirty-five. Porter Martone. Uh, Liam Greentree, Carson Rakoff, and Kevin Heap follow uh, behind that. Um, in net, folks, uh, GAA, Joy Costanzo, Joy Costanzo, 2.08, leading league in GAA um, for you, folks. So there's the league leaders. One stat I haven't pulled out for the boys in a long time is power play percentage. Let's take a look at power play percentage here, boys. I also want to note, uh, London Knights are on a 9-0 heater, 9-0 heater, so uh, watch out for that. But uh, And, of course, the uh, London Knights with the best power play percentage Shocker. in the league at 31%. Five first-rounders. 31%. Homer, again, Homer, Tom, I, I need your thoughts. I'm watching all the power plays in the NHL, in the OHL, wherever. They do this drop pass thing now. Everyone does the drop pass thing. Like why do you old hate school, it? Why do the you old, it? Old, old, it works. The old school it me, I just think it, it, it looks dumb. It you want to see the double no, swing? You want to see the double no, swing? No. <laughs> <laughs> the four man weave. He wants to... the double swing. The flying V. But that, but it works. But you got to be like, you got to be so the good at it because swing. if you the screw that swing. up, that guy's coming in as the last man. Like I don't know. The double swing I don't know. all it, time. It's although it's I've seen so that. Effective. I I saw a couple of videos. I saw a couple of videos um, of teams now. They'll drop it back, send the guy flying up the wall, 
and they'll hit him with speed because everyone's standing still, and they get yeah, in Jim, on, you know on what, a little break. You know what blow your yeah. mind? Is, is, but is, you got to have a guy that can can be a one man break. But break he, in. is they, Jim? They, it's but, it's exactly your point. You have your best forward. Usually forward, it is. You're gonna need someone the, all the time for entering that. the zone. You have your best player on your team that you're trusting your life with to do that. Like, and the team's defending him. Basically, you can't defend you it. Push the like, D back. Can't. They sit on the blue, and here I come, full steam. Choo choo. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Nate McKinnon yeah. coming at you, full tilt. Like, yeah, like what do you want, would, dude? I like, would, all I would do is move over and hand out a speeding ticket if that guy was coming down on me. <laughs> Jim wants the whole hit the red light and dump it in, rim it around. Yeah, <laughs> double rim. Double I rim. I know. I just double rim. I don't know this. The, the, but Jim, you know what blow your mind? The Leafs not, last year did. Some teams got two two guys going. Like it's the just Leafs. Wild. The Leafs did the double drop, Jim, last year for the longest yeah. times. The, like they did it twice. That that they did it once. It's wild. I like to know. And then like once I, just this, after. This is recent. This is recent. I'd like to know who came up with that uh, because that is recent and everybody's doing it now. Everybody's doing it, which is wild. Um, on to our Subri Wolfers, guys. Uh, let's give you their power play percentage. They're at a 21% power play percentage. I believe last year, mind you, last year was last year. The, the Wolves last year were the Subri Wolves power play merchants. 40, I think they're out rocking at a 45% um, during the season. But uh, Wolves go 1-1-1 one, one, and one this weekend, boys. Um, lose an OT at home to Barry. Lose in Barry and then go pick up a win in Owen Sound. That's got to be one of the worst 3-3s three and threes I've heard of. Just the odd Owen Sound game from uh, from from Barry. That, that's horrible, eh, Homer? Uh, I'm praying for those guys. Like that's that's going not to the Harry the Harry Lumley for this. yeah we had Beth Skowani on who was ta- talking to us about uh, the Harry Lumley he was uh, he played for for Owen Sound um, and yeah same uh, kind of idea with with the rink and not much to do in uh, in Old Sound but uh, Wolves go one one and one um, we got the M M&M and M factor now that's what uh, the Wolves uh, media team is uh, rocking yeah. with the M M&M. and M. Musty Molnar, um, that's you know the marketing team getting putting uh, bums in seats here. But uh, what do you think their effect uh, has been so far? I mean, you're adding a ton offense. more scoring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How is Molnar? Yeah. I haven't seen him yet. I'm he's good. He's he's scoring. He's scoring quite a bit. Um, I think he's had a goal in almost every game with the Wolfers so far. Yeah, he's been really good. Um, awesome. but again, I just hope, Ma- and, and I don't think, I don't think it's the case. Um, you know, if you, if you had the staff last year, maybe you're relying on those guys riding them till the cows come home. But I think it's a little different, uh, this year, of course. Um, here's my question. If you're the wolves and you're like in a, in a six seed heading to Jan 10th, what are you doing? What are you doing? You got to still make a trade, no? Thoughts, guys? <laughs> I don't have much on this. You're the I, th- sixth, I think you're, you're the six. I think I think their window was la- their window. Do? Their window was last year. I hate to be that guy. And now I understand, but I could definitely Jim, see. I, the I'm rest just of saying, these no, is no. too good, though. Absolutely, like, but I am. They're just four saying, trades away from being just as good as anybody else. In my I'm opinion. just saying I can see a world where moves are made to make the Wolves a little more competitive uh, come playoff time. What do you as know? Opposed to, as opposed to a full rebuild. No, no, no. I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying now you got Musty back. You got this Mar- Malnar guy back um, while well, you traded for him. But my thing is you gave up two-thirds to get Malnar. I'm assuming if you gave two-thirds, you know you're going to get those two-thirds back in another deal. A la Quentin Musty, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know if that trade. I don't know if that trade will happen now. Now that he's come back, I really don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, Jim. I I I think, and I we we might have a one of their defense on in the weeks to come. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I think their decor is too weak to compete 
Like they're three, four trades away, in my opinion. They're too young. Like they're besides the two overagers they have, I think they're That's too right. young. You're gonna the be in end. a tough spot. Yeah. You're gonna be in a tough spot come Jan. Are you one trade or like five? You're five. Yeah, you're a few. Opinion. You're a few. You're a few trades away. You're closer to five than you are to one trade away. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. I think. Um, Unless yeah, you're getting four D uh, the other way or something. <laughs> either way, either way, I think the Wolves are going to be better than Peter, bro. Um, okay, that's for sure. no kidding, no kidding. To get into the playoffs, so only two don't make it, right? Only two don't. don't Jim, make I'm it, not so. saying they're not getting it yeah, in. I'll I'm be just saying you can. You, you can play playoff hockey with the roster you have right now, and they might win a couple of games. They might even win a round, but they're not going to win the conference. Absolutely. Oh, getting I, in the playoffs. Absolutely. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying, debating that's that. What I mean, you're the six to eight coaching. seed. You're, you're the six to eight seed, maybe five yeah, but seeds. Jim, the into... six and the eight seeds in the NHL don't load up at the deadline either, buddy. They just like, they're happy to be there, maybe win a couple of rounds. Maybe Cinderella story go all the way, but they're not wasting all their draft picks in their future just because you know they're surprisingly in a playoff spot. Definitely going to be interesting coming uh, Jan tenth, boys. Let's move it on now to our interview, and we got a treat for you, folks. This person is taking the heart of a Sudbury Wolves fans uh, to start this year. Great story. Let's send it off to T. Jean. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do we ever have a treat of a guest for you today? He's quickly become a fan favorite here in Suds, a power forward for your Sudbury Wolves, and he can chuck them with the best of them, folks. From Toronto, Ontario, please welcome Tejon Streeter Street to the B2B podcast. How are we doing? Hello, hello. I'm doing great. Doing great this afternoon or this evening, I should say. <laughs> All Streeter, we're pumped to have you on, buddy. How, how you liking Suds so far? How you been getting acclimated to it? You know, big difference from the city, let's be honest. <laughs> but you no, know it's not too bad. Other than like I look to my left and I look to my right and it's all rocks. I mean, I can't complain. <laughs> can't complain. <laughs> love it oh, what's uh what's your th- what's your thoughts on the year so far like obviously the boys had a pretty good start to the season yeah you know what like it's it's been good like I was pretty nervous coming in and like I didn't know how the team was going to be at first we we're going to be super young but then you know we got Quinton back and we got uh Molly there and now we kind of like stepped it up or line up super deep now and super excited about how it's gonna how it's gonna pan out for sure it's oh, awesome a little bit of a controversial question here for you between the boys on the pod. What did you notice first when you got to Sudbury, the smokestack or the big nickel? You could say uh, neither, too. Neither, to be honest. <laughs> I seen the big nickel once, and it was like on a drive to Lively when we were going golfing, and nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> nothing special. Yeah. It's all the time. I mean, you look that a smokestack, saying, too. What's that smoke? What do you? What even is that? The big chimney. The big chimney. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In yeah. the skylight, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love it. That's hilarious. <laughs> love it. Tom Ball. What's um? Yeah. Before we get into the general career questions, I, I actually got to ask, and I actually kind of forgot we were in the room twice. What are your thoughts on Alex's pregame speeches when you were in there? Got the boys fired up, man. Hey, you like that? <laughs> it was actually good. That first one where you, you guys came in, you're like, uh. You know, starting lineup, and then you came in, <laughs> guns blazing, like the like, oh, the Kool Aid man. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. That was, uh, I'm good. Uh, um, so take us through how you got into hockey. Where did it all start for you? What age, and you know, how did you get really into it? Um, so I was like four when I started. Both my brothers, I have two older brothers. They both played. My dad played, and I was kind of just like my mom told me stories. Like right when I was born, like, I was in the rink just watching my brothers play hockey. So I was around hockey from day one. So I was just bound to be a hockey player and I was four, you know, playing house league and I loved it. You know, I, I actually almost got like kicked out of house league because I didn't know I wasn't allowed to hit and I was just going out hitting guys. And they're like, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that yet. So I had to, you know, tone it down, but yeah, that's how I started grade. i oh, sorry. When I was four years old and went up, played double a actually most of my life until about U 16. Then I went to the Toronto Red Wings and uh it was that covid year so that was my draft year and covid messed everything up it was terrible i got obviously no recognition being covid we're playing 4v4 uh, if you know what carnival league is there at scotia pond yeah, yeah 
that's mm-hmm. all we got to play really. It was like four on four, not even five on five. Obviously, no contact. It was just kind of a shit show. Yeah, um, brutal. Yeah, and then I uh, played two years of midget with uh, the Vaughn Kings. That was, those are two great years. I can't lie. I had a lot of fun there. Matt Ionetta, the head coach, he was a great coach, great guy. It was a great locker room those two years. And then uh, up to Junior A, playing for the Stovall Spirits, how I know uh, Groovy there. And um, had a good season. I ended up getting injured, actually, that season. Uh, in January, I tore two ligaments in my ankle. Kind of a terrible time. It was, like, right in the midst of, like, right before playoffs. Like, that's, like, the serious part of the season. I miss way too many games. But you know what? Just kept going hard, and now I'm on the Wolves. Yeah, there you go. Out of boy. Wicked. Out of boy. Yeah. Love it, Streeter. Streeter, were you close to playing any other sports, or was it always hockey for you? Oh, actually, I played rep basketball from grade 7 to grade 11. Uh, but I quit in grade 11, just focus on hockey. But I always played basketball gotcha. up as well. I love basketball. Yeah, what gotcha. position? I was a power forward. Yeah, no that kidding. Makes sense. Yeah, no makes kidding. sense. It makes sense. Out of boy. I love it. I love it. So, and you know, you kind of mentioned uh, about you know you found that you were bound to to be a hockey player, and you said you just made that decision. Was there a particular uh, moment for you when you're like, yeah, ho- hockey's the way to go? Um, kind of when I jumped to AAA because, like I said, I was playing Double A. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? Uh, in, like, grade nine, basketball was, like, kind of, like, beating hockey. Like, I was enjoying basketball more just because, like, my, my double-A team wasn't doing great, just wasn't having as much fun. But then I made that mm-hmm. jump to triple-A, and I was like, oh, like, I'm actually pretty good over here. Like, I can play this. Like, I can play at a high level. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to take hockey more serious. We're going to go the hockey route because I might be a big guy, but for basketball, I'm tiny. So I was like, okay, we're going, we're going hockey. Love it. Love it, man. No, that's, uh, that's unreal. And obviously, you know, um, most of the guys, uh, that we have on here and, and I, the reason why I like that we got you on here, most of the guys, you know, it's pretty cookie cutter way to, to the league. And, you know, they go through the conventional draft here and there. And I, I think your story's um, a lot more unique, uh, than that, which is great. So I guess, you know, obviously COVID couple bad bounces, um, and you know, obviously you don't get drafted into the O, but what kept you motivated to, to keep going and, and what, uh, where was the belief for you to, to make it to the O here? Um, yeah, like you said, like I heard my, I didn't hear my name for three drafts in a row. I was like, man, like, I don't know if I'm ever going to play in the OHL. And when it ended up happening also, I got, um, out of the Kings, I got a Sarnia, Sarnia thing invite, camp invite, main camp invite. And I got injured there as well. And I was like. I was really confident I was going to make that team. Like I was having, I had a really good season. I had a really good camp. And then right before like the all-star game they have. Tear, or sorry, was a grade two AC joint tear. I was like, man, this is like, am I ever going to actually play in this league? Like it was kind of just going down from there. And then I went to the OJ and I kind of just had a hot start. I was like, oh, yeah. Had a really hot start. <laughs> And then, like I said, I got injured again in the OJ. And then London ended up inviting me to a main camp as well. And um, I lit it up like <laughs> best hockey I played. <laughs> I, I guess that's how the word kind of got around. Sudbury was like, we might just take a chance on this kid. So they invited me up to uh, preseason and uh, made the squad. And it kind of just like, I don't know. I don't even really know how to really answer that question. I kind of just just kept going, really. It just yeah, yeah. And kept working stuck at with it. it. Yeah, trust the like, process. Man. Yeah, if because like for me, it was like okay, if I'm not gonna play in the OHL, like I want to try and play NCAA. Yeah, so I kind of just kept working, and then I you know got the opportunity, and here I am. Yeah, wicked, wicked man, Homer. Yeah, you kind of touched on it there already, but uh, just a little more in depth. If you could take us through like making the wolves uh, in preseason, there. How did uh, how did you get things done, and how did that uh, go for you? Uh, I think really like I was just being super physical, like those first couple games in preseason, and everyone was really liking. It. Boys on the team were liking it. Pops loved it. Um, <laughs> I think uh, fighting Sam Bonus there, kind of beating him up, 
was like, okay, we're going to take this kid. I think, that was, I think that was the difference maker. I can't lie. There you go. Out of boy. Uh, we loved it. We Love loved it. it, Streeter. We weren't, we weren't, uh, you know, we follow the Wolves uh, heavily, but we weren't really uh, in touch with preseason or or main camp for a bit. But I'll yeah. tell you, I, I remember talking to uh, Matty Mayhew, of course, you know, goal, goalie coach, yeah, the goalie coach uh, yeah, with yeah. the wolf, with the Wolfers. He's like, dude, there's this street kid. And he's ready to just chalk him with anybody. Um, and uh, I knew right away, I was like, this guy's going to stick, especially in suds, um, especially in suds for sure. Um, and again, the coaching staff, new coaching staff here with the Wolvers, obviously your first time with them um, as well. You got the barn dog, Desi um, and Bear uh, as well. And I think, and Govey, um, obviously you couldn't ask for a, a, a better crew, in my opinion, no, but yeah, beauty, let us know. All yeah. Beauties. How yeah. are they? They're good. They're yeah. great. Honestly, they're yeah. great. Like Barnes, obviously no bullshit guy, but you know, <laughs> he, he knows his hockey and obviously like, he's still a good guy. He makes his jokes. He's always chirping the fellas. Like honestly, really good coaching staff. Like so funny. It makes going to the rink at eight in the morning. Not too bad. Cause it's like the boys are great. <laughs> coaching staff's great. All beauties. I love it. Oh, amazing, amazing! And you mentioned going to the rink. Like, what what was your thoughts on this uh, on this arena when you walked in for the first time? <laughs> for the first time, so I watched Shoresy. I was like, oh, I already know this rink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I, every, I've already seen everything. Yeah, so I was like, but you know what? After going to a couple more rinks, I'm like, oh, my rinks kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a new one coming. New yeah. one coming. You might be yeah. yeah. twenty eight. You'll be you'll, yeah. You, you won't 2030 about, 2030 it'll be yeah, yeah 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 2035 yeah. maybe fuck what about uh <laughs> what <laughs> what about the wolf on the wire you must have been like what what's going on here yeah paps told me about it at first but i i was like oh okay that's kind of cool and then i was like also kind of stupid but then like <laughs> now they're like we score and the wolf goes over there it's like yeah yeah eat up Come on, you know what's going on. <laughs> I enjoy yeah. that. I enjoy that. Oh, I love it. I love it, Streeter. Uh, and again, we, we kind of mentioned it before, um, but you obviously play with an edge. And honestly, there's not many guys in junior hockey that are, are willing to chuck them um, anymore and, and fight. And and obviously, uh, you know, it's been uh, becoming a bigger part uh, in your role. Obviously, you can only fight three times here um yeah. uh in the league but again the physicality part and, and everything so i guess was that a role you kind of found um naturally or for you was it like i, I know i got to make it and this is kind of what's going to separate me so i kind of switched my role like when i made the the von kings there i yeah. wasn't really getting ice time my first year i was like okay so how am i gonna get on the ice so i was like you know what i'm a big guy i'm just gonna throw my body around and it worked. It worked so well because, like, once I really started throwing my body and guys know, like, you got to play against street, I do, wouldn't even have to hit in that game and guys didn't want to come in the corner with me. Makes right. the game so much easier. So I kind of, like, changed my role from there and kept going with it. And, like, now it's just, like, that is my bread and butter. Just go in the corner, get pucks deep, and lay the butt. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. Home slice. Good man. Uh, so – Take us through your uh, your mindset when you're about to get into a tilt. I mean, you know, there's lots of different ways you can go at it. Are you like a strategy guy or are you just, I'm going to punch this guy in the face as many times as I can uh, <laughs> until he hits the it, it depends on who, like, I'm fighting. Like, yeah. I fought guys that were smaller than me. I'm just, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to kick this kid's ass. <laughs> but, like, when I'm going against someone I know that can fight, I'm like, okay, let's not get my teeth knocked out. Let's... Let's, you know, figure this out, go in a yeah. little bit more defensively. Yeah. But usually it's kind of just, let me just throw my rights around and see how this goes. And away okay. you go, yeah. yeah. You had one, um, was it not not this weekend past, I think the weekend before. I think it came right at the end of the shift, right in front of the, front of the bench. Both of you guys were gassed, but just yeah. absolutely giving it. Yeah. yeah. How was that one? That one was like... I wasn't even expecting it. He just like speared me in the balls. I'm like, okay, this guy's gonna pay for that. And I started <laughs> going at him, and uh, I threw a couple lefts. I don't really don't usually throw yes, lefts, but I remember I, that. I switched it up, got a couple lefts in there. <laughs> yeah, that was against the Bay. That was North Bay. Yeah, 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 
Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Oh man, wicked, wicked. Um, and so, h- how's the conversation go with like Barn Dog, whoever? Like, you got to get approval, or like, hey, coach, I'm going someone tonight, or or does it kind of just happen naturally? Like, take me through that whole process. Yeah, it's kind of kind of just how the game goes. Like, so that first fight in preseason, actually, like Barnes, like I was on the bench, and uh, Bonus made like kind of an iffy hit, and Barnes was like, shoot or go. Okay, I know what I've got to do. So I've got to <laughs> there and my thing, but usually That's it's so kind of just how the game goes, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. okay, cool. Cool. Um, switching a little bit of topics here. Obviously, big news coming out of uh, out of the NCAA. And you mentioned you were in a unique spot where you were deciding if you were going to go college uh, or all route. Well, now you don't have to worry about that because you could go there um, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the next coming years here. So I guess what's your thoughts on the NCAA now letting uh, CHL players um, to go and play college? No, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think the OHL is going to be super strong in like the next coming months. All the guys coming from the USHL, the OJ, the Null and all that, they're going to they, – because they don't really have to play there anymore. They can come play CHL yeah. hockey, and I think the CHL is going to be like – insane it's gonna be best on best hockey i think it's best for everyone other than those tier two junior leagues they're gonna kind of be watered down just a little bit because they're losing you know their better guys because there's no reason for them to be playing there anymore yeah but like other than that i think it's going to be good for everyone good for college hockey good for the nhl even like the development's going to be insane yeah absolutely no you're, you're bang on um for sure homer yeah so we'll switch uh topics again on uh, on game day, are you a big routine guy? Do you got any superstitions, or are you like, all right, let's just get up and go to the rink? Mm. You already got the jam. Yeah, not not too big of a routine guy. Just get my chicken and rice down, and <laughs> really, yeah, to be honest, I put boy. when I'm getting dressed, like I'll put all my left side stuff on first, and then my right side. That's okay. Yeah. All right. No, I like it. I like it. Do uh, you listen to your own tunes or someone on the ox? Nah, whatever's on the ox goes. Yeah. Like. I don't – I used to hate country. I'm going to be honest. I used to hate country. But now, like, over the past couple, like, two years, kind of getting used to it, whatever. Oh, boy. But before the game, I cannot listen to no country. There can't be country in my ears before the game. Who's on Ox? Uh, Bill and Ev's usually on Ox. Billy. Yeah, oh, really. no. <laughs> oh, no. What a Sometimes, he's what he's off playing. Box. Sometimes he's not playing the right songs. They're like, okay, Billy, let's go. Let's come on. I remember when I was playing there, we used to let him on. We used to let him yeah. on. He play odd. Yeah. He play the odd time. <laughs> so funny. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a young buck. Yeah, now I guess he's an older guy uh, in the room. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's jokes. Um, so shooter, I guess what's the plan for you? Like, uh, in the next coming years, you, do you have you thought about it yet, or are you just kind of taking it game by game, day by day? Uh, game by game, day by day. To be honest, like, yeah, even when like getting here was just like. Oh man, I'm really here. Like, it wasn't really expected, right? So I'm kind of yeah. just going with the flow and see what happens, man. Yeah. Oh, good for you, man. It's a, it's a, it's an awesome, uh, awesome story. Um, any interest out, outside of hockey here? Are you like, what what do you do in, in the summertime? What do you get up to? Like I said, I play a lot of basketball. Like this this coming or this past summer, I played. Uh, it's kind of like it's not a men's league basketball, but it kind of is. It's like a rec. It's called yeah, yeah. league. Super competitive, just like that's kind of my thing. Like I said, I used to play basketball, so I play a lot of yeah, basketball yeah. during the summer. I also ride dirt bikes. I love my dirt bikes. So okay. yeah, Sweet. getting on the oh, bike boy. and just going through trails. Sometimes going through the neighborhood, even though it's not legal, just ripping around. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Gotcha. Whereabouts yeah. uh, in TO are you from? Vaughn from Vaughn. Vaughn. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, Vaughn. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Love Vaughn. Yeah, yeah great spot. Great spot. Awesome. Homer, you got anything before we go to Fast Five? No, I think we're good. I'm a big fan. Cool. I'm a big fan. I, lo- I love what? watching you, Chuck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, boy. One more uh, before we go to the rapid fire questions here, Streeter. I guess, w- what's your message? Um, I get, We got, obviously, we got a ton of young people listening um, to the pod here and a lot of people that are definitely going to be going on unconventional routes here um, to play hockey at a higher level. So I guess, what's your message as a guy that kind of uh, – obviously grinded it out and, and now is uh, playing, uh, you know, the best junior hockey in uh, in Canada. You know, like like I said, I didn't hear my name three drafts in a row. Even, like, if you're a low draft, 11th, 12th round, like, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as you just put in the work and off, off, sorry, 
put in the work in the off seasons, put in the work during the season, you know, keep your head down, get working. Cause you never know who's watching when they're watching. You just got to keep working. And if you really want it, like you can get there. Like, like I said, I really wanted it. I didn't think it would happen, but here I am. So you just kind of yeah. just got to keep working, keep going at it. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Just keep going. Yeah. Oh, Persistence for awesome. sure. I love it. Um, all right, Streeter, our fast five here before uh, we let you go. It's five rapid fire questions, whatever comes to the top of your head. Let it rip, Homer. You you want it? You want the fast five, brother? You can take it, brother. Okay. All right. Here we go. Dream travel destination. Portugal. Okay. <sighs> nice. Who's winning uh, between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson? <laughs> uh, I got to go Tyson for sure. 100%. Iron Mike. Yeah, got to go. Got to go with Iron Mike. Yeah. yeah cool. I love it. Uh, go to karaoke song. Ooh, go to karaoke song. Ah, uh, ooh, that's a tough one, man. I'm drawing a blank here. What's that? Uh, that one Taylor Swift song. Uh, how does it go? Uh, I wear I wear t-shirts. Or t -shirts. <laughs> We're getting a little taste. We're getting a little taste. <laughs> a little uh, what is that? Um, yeah. What's that one called there? Uh, you belong with me. Yes, that's, that's, the, one called. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. nice. That's the go -to. So we had a Swifty here. I love it. Um, <laughs> favorite stick you've ever used? Uh, trigger four. CCM trigger four. Okay. Okay. Um, and see now. I'm not sure if you've been uh, able to try lots of Subby restaurants, but this is one we ask every pod. Have you tried any, and what's your favorite so far, Subby restaurant? Tried a couple. Um, I mean, nothing, like, insane. I guess Apollo was pretty good. Okay. There you uh, go. Yeah. We went to Apollo a couple of times, so I guess I'll stick with that. Cool. And, um, you know, just to, to give you a little uh, another one here, um, we said Sabri restaurant, but if anyone's ever in the Vaughn area, where where are you sending them? Oh, Vaughn area? Okay, it's a little little Italian spot, not too known, but it's called uh, Bella Italia. It's right by my house. It's got really good Italian food. You know, Vaughn, everyone's Italian in Vaughn. So. Yep. Okay. Bella Italia. Mark it down. Mark yeah. it down. Okay, done. Noted. Noted. Uh, well, listen, Streeter, thanks a lot. Um, for coming uh, on the pod here, I don't think this is the last time we'll uh, we'll hear from you. So obviously, oh, uh, yeah, great uh, great chat with you. Your story's sick, man, um, uh, yeah. and uh, we love uh, we love seeing you out there uh, in the Wolfers colors. So again, thanks a lot for coming on uh, B2B podcast, man. No worries. Thanks for having me. It was great. Awesome. That was the interview with Tejon Street, proudly sponsored by our friends at Groove It and pin golf as well as full wedge as you know folks full wedge is our official golf clothing sponsor um and clothing sponsor of btb you can go to their site you know black friday's coming up here btb 20 for 20 percent off 20 percent off uh your next purchase go and check it out full wedge we love them and we also love pin golf my goodness pin golf they have some of the best deals, folks. Black Friday, um, I believe right now they're giving away a speaker with the with the rangefinder uh, that you purchase. One hundred fifty dollars that value. So, uh, Pin Golf always got the deals going. Keep your eyes out uh, for Black Friday, and of course, BTB fifteen for fifteen percent off of Pinned Golf. All right, let's go now to our four pack and it's plain and simple folks it's the best drinks in the ohl the best drinks in the ohl um we're gonna put homer to the test here and tommy you can set the order here my friend uh give myself one uh homer two and shim got the double d on and out and out number one didn't even play in the league I have family in the area. Give me the odd atorium. It's a good pick. The odd Kitchener. Kitchener. Is you guys questioning that at one? I also have a one one a one that. B. Okay. I mean I Homer's the odd is special. Homer's yeah. gonna take it, I believe. Do you want it, so, Jim? 
I mean, take whatever you want. Well, I can give it to you, bud, because I'm really mad they changed the name of it. So you can yeah. have it, okay? I'll let I you mean, have it. Okay. I'll let okay. you have it. I'll let you have it. I'm going with the WFCU Center in Windsor. Hot tub, <sighs> steam room. <laughs> what so more? So you know the amenities. Oh, buddy, are you kidding? I tell you one thing. From the minute that that final buzzer went off, eh, you could find me in the hot tub till an hour and a half later. After there that. you go, boom. Homer's going for the players. Uh, the players here for sure. Um, yeah. I will take Canada Life Center, also known as the Bud, uh, <laughs> in London. I mean, yeah, it's still called the Bud. Yeah, the Bud. It's the Bud. It's always been the Bud. Um, and I will follow that up with, I'll try and get, uh, over to the player side as well. The tribute communities center. Good pick in Oshawa, Ontario. What a room. Wow. What a room over there in Oshawa. Wow. What a room. Uh, wow. Millions. Wow. We're talking millions. Millions. Well, hey, keep in mind, keep in mind. We're not, we're not picking cities. We're picking arenas. We're picking arenas. Homer. Totally, totally have? off topic, and th- this is so Tommy of me. I'm starving, boys. I can't wait for dinner. I always got to ask what everyone's having for dinner. But like, I'm, ex- I'm just excited. But, but, oh, you yeah, ready? Dinner oh, been right. done. Yeah, yeah. Like, I push dinner late here. That's Ribs, I'm just looking forward to it. And pizza. Nice. Wow, it was crazy. But I got a little bit of stuffed peppers. That's what's in the oven right now. So oh, that's good know. stuff. Classic. Healthy yeah, guy. it's unbelievable. Thanks, buddy. Um, GFL Memorial Gardens in Sault Ste. Ontario. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. I love you, the McKay family. Forever. Oh, the special place, eh? It uh, it has my heart. It what, is the arena fun. or the basement? <laughs> <laughs> the nest. The nest. The ne- Did you ever <laughs> eat at the restaurant called. in there, Homer? At the GFL? They got a restaurant in there, no? No. Are you sure? Uh, well, um, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, play I swear, I want to buy one. Maybe it was, it was never the bar. There. It might be there now. There's like a yeah. There's like a taped off bar. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I'm referring to. That's what I'm referring All right. to. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, Tom, back to back. I think it's still called this. Um, I'm going solely on the name. Just kidding. I think it's a beautiful arena. Give me the Sleeman Center, Guelph Storm. Ooh, good, good pick. pick Thank good you. Pick. Go ahead, Thank Tom. You. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take it because I don't think Homer's going to get to it in time, and I want to piss him off a little bit. It's highly ranked on this site I'm going on. I've never been in the building. They're the wagon of the East right now. East? Correct. Kingston Frontenacs. Give me the Leon Center. Tom, we're fighting too in Minnesota. <laughs> that was my next pick. It Leon, actually is, I thought I was is, gonna. I, I, the Leon. It is such I've, a sick barn. Everyone like. Oh, otherwise known as, uh, I believe. Hopefully, I'm getting the city rate right, cops coliseum. Correct. No. Not well, sure. It's, no, it's cops coliseum Hamilton. Yes. Correct. Well, dash cops one. Coliseum. That, it's okay, sorry. we've been on the pod for an hour and a half, so it's you're allowed. Sorry, K Mac Center is uh, what I believe Kingston was referred to back in the day. Sorry, Homer, you got the uh, pick now. See now it's it's slim pickings. I am uh, I'm gonna take uh, <laughs> just a just a nostalgic place, Sudbury. Arena. Oh, you see? come on. You're, I get, thought I was you're getting get some them. votes. You're getting, I'm getting some, votes. some votes. Oh, great. I love pick. the people. I love the people. I really, people I love really you. wanted. The people really love wanted you. that pick. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought I could get him a little bit later. I thought there was no chance Homer was taking Homer, him. on a side note with the Sub Arena talk, uh, I heard a lot of good things from uh, the owner of Mr. Prime Rib, my uncle. I was at the restaurant Friday. He loved you, and so does his oh, daughter. I just wanted to give you a little no free, ad, yeah, no free ads, no free ads there. Prime rib on the Kaiser lunchtime can't beat it. But um, the au jus sauce, my goodness, 
My goodness. Mm. Um, okay. Give me the Meridian Center in Niagara what Falls. A pick. Yeah. Wow. Nicely done, Jim. What an arena. I'm just going for like big and beautiful arenas here. And then I'm going to bring <laughs> I you purposely right back. Didn't, I didn't choose it because I wouldn't know how to pronounce the name of it. So good thing. I'm going to bring you. I'm going to bring you right back now. I went big and beautiful. Now I'm going to the toughest place to play in the OHL. One of the toughest places. Give me Mem Gardens. Memorial <laughs> Gardens. You want to talk about grit, Homery? I see your face. I'll give you some grit. Memorial Gardens. I know you never liked playing there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> what is it good for? Hey. Dash one. <laughs> Good pick. Is it me? It is Homer. Mm. <laughs> Homer, man, you no. play in the league. How hard it can it be? It, it, Tom, it's hard, man. Like there are there are some eye rolling arenas. War. Do, 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 do. I, you know what? what is I, I, good for I, this is my, like the hometown. Like I remember going to my hometown rookie lab. Give me the Sadlon Arena in Barry. Right. We'll right. go that way. Right. Right. There's right. one more right. that I'm just waiting for Tom to take here, and I'm gonna see if he takes it or not. You think what I'm going to? Pick? Sorry, Homer. Barry Colts. Barry Colts. Sadlon Coles. Arena. Yeah, that's my last pick. I Otherwise think this as, is a uh, great Molson pick. Arena. Yeah. I'm going here next, and I think uh, I might get a lot of flack from the only person that's lived there more than one year, Roberto Bagnato in Ottawa. Give me TD Place just because in a couple of years with that NHL team being downtown, it's going to be the place to be. It's a great venue. There's a million restaurants around. You can go there before the games. You can load up with some food and some you-know-what, head into TD Place and watch the Ottawa 67s play. What are you loading up on? Other than uh, uh, water, Gators? Pepsi, and yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great venue, right downtown, smack of Ottawa, beautiful. Was I was I right with that pick, Homer? Was no? it TD TD Center? Is that what it's called? TD, TD Place. place. Uh, no, TD yeah, place. that's where I thought you were going, one hundred percent. Okay, all right. So, all right, folks. Let's uh, go through the teams here. Tom went with the odd Sleeman Center. Uh, sorry, the odds in Kitchener, Sleeman Center in Guelph, Leon Center in Kingston, and TD Place in Ottawa. Homer went with the WCFU Center in Windsor. WFCU. WFCU. Thank you, Homer. 10 <laughs> 4, buddy. Uh, GFL Memorial Gardens in the Sioux. Sud- you had the Northern Swing here, uh, Sudbury Arena. Um and Sadlon Arena in Barry. I went with uh the Bud in London, Tribute Community Center in Oshawa, Meridian Center in Niagara, <laughs> and Memorial Gardens in Da Bay. So there you have it, folks. There are our picks for the best rinks in the OHL. And with that, folks, we are gonna wrap it up here for week 181 of Behind the Bench. Thank you to all that listen. You can go and check out our Ben Leeson article now at the Subway Star. And uh thanks to Tejon Street uh for coming on Tejon. Tejon. And that'll do it, folks. Week 181. Love y'all. We'll see one you One last thing before we let you go, uh, folks, to week 182. Just want to send out uh my condolences to uh, the Felino and Rocca family. Um, Felino family, not to be confused with uh, the Marcus and Nick Felinos of the world. Um, this is Felinos without the G. Uh, Frida Felino, who have, I've had on as uh, a performer of the week, tragically passed away to uh, crank pancreatic cancer. So just want to send my love and condolences to uh, the family on behalf of BTB. And, of course, uh, as well, Tony Rocket passed away. Uh, as well, Green Uncle and my cousin both passing um, away last week. So just want to send uh, our condolences on behalf of BTB uh, to the families. We love them. Sending all the love 
and uh, we will see you for week 182.